People tell us every week that our information has helped save their life. If you agree that this is helpful information, please like, share, and most of all, subscribe. Because nothing makes a channel like subscriptions. Let's talk about empagliflozin. What the heck is empagliflozin? It's one of the SGLT2s. You know, the SGLT2s are like Jardiance, Farzaga. Those are the two that I most commonly use. Here's what happens with the SGLT2s. When you have diabetes or significant prediabetes, when your blood sugar gets up over 100, your kidneys filter it out into the urine. But then after they filter it out and it's going down the pipes in the kidneys for the urine, there are special mechanisms within those pipes that pull the glucose back into the blood. The SGLT2s stop that process. So it's sort of like a really neat safety vac. The SGLT2s basically say, look, when your blood sugar 100 or below, when it's in a safe level, it doesn't do anything. But when your blood sugar goes over 100, then it starts filtering it out, that blood sugar. So that's one of the reasons about the two drug classes that are just knocking it out of the park in terms of heart failure, cardiovascular events, heart attack, stroke, death, and the SGLT2s. The other one is the Azempic and the other GLP ones. So to this article, New England Journal of 2023, January of this year, effects of empagliflozin and SGLT2s in patients with chronic kidney disease. Now that's one of the big questions. If you have kidney disease, and guess what the most common cause kidney disease is, insulin resistance and diabetes. So that's why this is a big question. One of the two major drug classes that really helps with diabetes impacts the kidney. So the question is, is there something inherent to that impact, that mechanism on the kidneys that causes kidney damage? The Impa Kidney Collaborative Group conducted a randomized placebo-controlled trial that evaluated the effects of treatment with the SGLT2 on kidney disease and cardiovascular outcomes. The results from the trial of at least 200 showed the benefits with respect to kidney failure extended to patients without diabetes, but there were limited data regarding patients with lower GFR, even a GFR, kidney disease like 30 and below. Very significant kidney failure. Anyhow, the bottom line is, as you can see, basically these are called Kaplan-Meier life event numbers. So what their life tables, people in life insurance use them. So every time somebody has an event, their number goes up. So the placebos, as you can see, more and more events. The SGLT2s, significantly less events. So, looks like it worked, didn't it? And the answer is yes.